All right. Okay. So to get us started, I'm going to go ahead and share a PowerPoint. All right. Can everybody see the PowerPoint? Yes. Awesome. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, so the first uh, piece of the agenda is I do, we're going to review the um, statewide transportation improvement fund discretionary and statewide network funding projects that were uh, applied for uh, that uh, somehow have to do with our services. So the, and then we need to rank them. So I'll go through each specific project. Um, and then my ask is that the committee ranks them in priority uh, so that we, we have the list of what's the most important to the community. And then if necessary, ODOT would use this information in order to help make determination uh, for uh, funding if uh, not all of them can be funded. Okay, so the first one is the Columbia Gorge Express. Uh, so this is one of our big routes. Uh, and this is the one that goes between Hood River, Cascade Locks, Multnomah Falls, and Portland. Um, we applied for the funds uh, and the purpose being to preserve existing service levels on the Columbia Gorge Express service along the I-84 corridor between Hood River, Cascade Locks, Multnomah Falls, and Portland. Uh, part of this application was also to expand the service during summer months. Uh, so year round, it'll be seven trips a day, seven days a week. And then during the busy summer months, it'll be 11 trips per day. Uh, a huge piece of this project or of this service is it has impacts on access management, land use, parking, and traffic congestion efforts. Uh, this service impacts the, or it helps mitigate traffic and safety concerns on, at Multnomah Falls parking lot, uh, as well as along the I-84 corridor. And then of course, within our small communities of Cascade Locks and the city of Hood River. The more people that we can get on the bus, the less uh, visitor uh, private vehicle traffic we get in our small downtowns. This service was directly operated by us. Uh, in the past, we have also applied for funding, funding to operate the service between the Dalles and Hood River. And in this new application, it'll be purely uh, between Columbia, or sorry, Hood River, Cascade Locks, Multnomah Falls, and Hood River. Uh, the Link or McKed has applied for funding directly for the service between the Dalles and Hood River, which makes sense because it allows them to do a little bit more service to Wasco County, which is their uh, area of operation. Any questions on the Columbia Gorge Express? Okay. So the next uh, project that we applied for funding and staff uh, suggests that this is a priority recommendation or a priority level of two. Uh, so we applied directly for the funds. Uh, the purpose of it is to procure and implement information or improve, or sorry, intelligent information systems, which includes uh, automated passenger counters, upgraded dispatching software, a real-time passenger information uh, implementation and dynamic fare payment solutions. The whole purpose of this application is to improve user experience and uh, data for the budget planning and reporting purposes, and just make it overall an easier system for people to use and understand. Uh, the link was considering joining this application, but they have decided not to. And the, the third project, and this staff recommends uh, rating this priority level three, uh, these funds were, or this project was applied for directly by McKed. However, CAT contributes toward the match. Uh, the purpose is to um, 
increased ridership, especially among transportation disadvantaged residents by uh, ensuring there's clear communication of the transit network in the gorge. So that's the, the four providers of uh, Columbia Area Transit, um, the link in Wasco County, Skamania County Transit in Skamania County, of course, and uh, Mount Adams Transportation Services in um, Klickitat. Any questions on uh, those other projects? Okay, great. Uh, now I would ask for either a motion to uh, approve the staff recommendation priorities or staff recommended uh, prioritization of the projects or to suggest other recommendations. Amy, this is Kevin. Can I ask you one quick question we, before we get to a motion? Yes. Um, back to the intelligent information systems, you mentioned that Link had decided not to apply for funding for uh, a similar um, improvement in their system. Does that create any wrinkle for people tr using both systems? No, and they actually might. Um, they are looking at the dispatch software that we have decided to move forward with. So there is a potential that we'll actually still be on the same dispatching software. Um, so it won't cause any operational issues. Uh, mainly the hope was to kind of uh, move the, the gorge transit providers kind of to a, a, make sure that we're all on the same page. But I think that can still happen. Uh, it'll, I think CAT will probably just be the guinea pig. And then we'll, we'll test out these different solutions. And then um, depending on funding, uh, and uh, what we've learned from the, the programs, uh, then we can help the other providers if they choose to, to add these things. But it won't, uh, with the link not moving forward, it's not gonna impact them in any way or the rider. It's just gonna probably make a little, it's gonna make it easier for the riders to use the CAT system compared to the link system potentially. Um, but our hope is, and I, I think they'd have to speak to this specifically, um, but I think their hope is to eventually kind of move in the same direction. Uh, they just are not quite ready yet. Great. Thank you, Amy. All right. All right. If no one else is going to jump in, I um, appreciate the work that staff has done to put together these recommendations, and I would move to approve uh, the recommendations in the same priority that is recommended by staff. Thank you. Can I get a second? I can second that. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you. All right, and all votes, I Okay. Yes, I thank you. Okay. Okay, and Ivy, just, you can give a thumbs up. All right, and Lexi. Great, thank you. All right. So the next piece uh, that I do need uh, a decision from the SIF Advisory Committee, which is yourselves, is to either approve the uh, past uh, threshold for uh, the poverty rate, uh, or to suggest a, or to, sorry, approve a new uh, definition. So just to go back a little bit, the previous SDIF plan so for the 21-23 biennium, so just to be clear, that's July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2023. Um, the definition for the poverty rate threshold in Hood River County was defined as communities with high percentage of low income households, uh, as census block groups within the county that have 30% or more of households within in income level that is 200% or less of the federal poverty standards. And so this is a requirement of the SDIF advisory committee. 
um, and the plan itself in order for us to move forward. We do need you all to uh, approve the definition as this is how we uh, uh, ensure that our services that we use these funds for that we get from the state are going to the target audience. And Valerie, please step in at any time if you think there's anything that needs to be added while I'm in this uh, agenda item. So as I sent in your materials, I did include a memo that suggested my recommendation. Um, there, we could move forward with the 30% of, um, sorry, of uh, population or of individuals within census block groups. However, looking at the data that I have readily available to me through the ODOT website called Remix, I think if we do that, it won't potentially capture uh, some of the census groups that, or the census block groups that I think based on my local knowledge, and I'm looking for you all to confirm or deny this, I won't necessarily be included. So if you drop it to, uh, do, do, do. so if you keep it at 30%, let's say, before I move on, is everybody following me so far? Okay. Um, so if we keep it at 30%, you have several block groups that won't be included that are technically have a high percentage of people per square mile that fall below the poverty threshold, uh, which is a defined as, um, sorry, do, do, do. let me get my actual definition here. So the US Census Bureau defines it as Following the Office of Management and Budgets, OMB Statistical Policy Directive 14, the Census Bureau uses a set of money income thresholds that vary by family size and composition to determine who is in poverty. If a family's total income is less than the family's threshold, then that family and every individual in it considers in is considered in poverty. The official poverty threshold do not vary geographically, but they are updated for inflation using consumer price index. The official poverty definition uses money income before taxes and does not include capital gains or non-cash benefits. So essentially, kind of the data set that we were using last biennium, we're kind of using a different data set based on the recommendation from ODOT. And because of that, it's kind of changing how um, it changes the data. And but in order to use um similar wordage from what we have in the past and also to make sure that we're not um leaving behind some census blocks groups uh, i think it is important to change the definition to 15 percent or above does that all make sense it's okay to say no amy that does not make sense <laughs> Amy, this is Kevin. I'll be honest. I, I struggled a little bit to um, to understand it, but I, I appreciate that uh, ODOT is recommending using the remix tool and um, that there is another way to look at the data that's available. Um, in the mapping that you've included in the packet, um, if we continue down to page nine of that PDF, there's okay. a drawing specifically of Hood River, and it uh, kind of distinguishes uh, land on the east and west sides of 13th Street. It's got a couple of different shades of orange. Do those correspond with the, the uh, data that's just above it that you just had up on the screen in some way? Yes. So everything, and I try, I made this graph myself to try to kind of help make sense of everything. Um, but essentially, so anything that's yellow, the lighter yellow, that's going to be this lighter yellow area. 
anything that is that dark orange or that medium orange is here is the medium orange and then here's the dark orange. There's the medium and the dark. Does that make sense? Sure. And are we saying that by um, redefining the threshold to 15% that these areas that are in darker orange would be eligible for service somehow differently? Yes. So if you moved it to 15%, so if you look on this, if you look, so on the page that I am on at the graph, if you look at below 30, so below 30, there are three different census block groups that are the medium orange, mm -hmm. and there is one that is a dark orange. So if we kept the definition at 30% of um, individuals in a census block group are at 200% or, with, or within 200% of the federal poverty level, you would not be including any of these groups. Mm -hmm. And those groups specifically, um, I believe are these ones and then one of these ones, or sorry, are over by, I keep pointing with my, my cursor and I don't think you can see that, um, but over by Safeway is a one of the census block groups. And then I believe over um, up in the Heights mm -hmm. is another one. So if we don't include those areas, it might make it hard for us to give service to those areas in the future. And based on my knowledge of the area, and this is where I'm looking for you all as well, um, I believe that, or for your thoughts and your input, I believe if we leave off those areas that could be detrimental to those low-income individuals who live in those areas who depend on these services. Um, and so that's what concerns me. Okay, thanks, Amy. I, I would concur. I'm also familiar with um, some of the housing that's available in those um, block groups and uh, targeted at uh, low-income households and would agree that it would be beneficial to serve those areas. Thank you. Um, thank you. That was really helpful. Um, I just want to make sure I understand. So if we vote to adjust the um, definition that will be including more folks that we can serve in the future. Okay, I like that. I want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it basically allows, so by adjusting the definition for the staff recommendation, which would be to reduce the threshold to 15% of the block group of households with an income level that is 200% or less of the federal poverty standards, that allows us to ensure that we're still serving um, some of these communities in downtown um, Hood River and using the funds um, that we receive for this specific uh, from this specific funding source to serve those areas. Um, so that gives us the flexibility for um, to use some of the funding for the city of Hood River, um, as well as our other routes that, that serve this too. Um, but then it gives us a little more leeway to um, uh, for some of the other projects that you'll, you'll see here in a bit. Valerie, is there anything else you wanna to add to that? Nope, nothing further from me. It sounds like you're doing what the stiff rules do specify, which is determining the local process to identify that or define that. And so as long as that's all documented, which it should be, I think it's uh, everything sounds fine. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Amy, can I ask one more question? Yes. I'm, I'm most familiar with city of Hood River. Um, not some of the other uh, portions of our county and where populations are located. If we are redefining the threshold, are we? Um, is there any detriment to community members outside of this area? No, um, mostly because, I mean, this really does give a, a pretty wide range, but it, it encapsulates, so I'm gonna go back to this uh, slide. If you look at the graph here, it 
allows for, it does cover everywhere that our service is covered. Um, so all of the services that we're going to talk about here for the projects, as, as well as the ones um, that we talked about the last time we met. So the Hood River City route, the Upper Valley route, um, and, uh, and really all of our services do somehow touch these spaces and serve these populations. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? So if you would like to, you can, someone can uh, suggest a motion uh, either for the previous definition or the staff recommendation or a suggestion of, or a combination of whatever the advisory committee I would like to suggest. Taylor, you got this. <laughs> um, I would like to, what does it make a motion to adopt the staff recommendation of the new, the updated uh, definition? Specifically 15% or less of or 15% or more of the ag block groups having 200% or more of the, the federal poverty level. Sorry, I'm gonna bring back up my, <laughs> I'm gonna say it specifically. Um, reducing the threshold, the poverty threshold to 15% of the block groups of households with an income level that is 200% or less of the federal poverty standards. Do you need me to repeat that to make it official? You can you can just say the the staff recommendation as long as it's just recorded. Um, yes, I want to make a motion to adopt the staff recommendation um, that includes what Amy just said okay. <laughs> to adjust it to fifty percent or higher the blockers. Yeah, fifteen percent. Yes. I'll second that motion. Wonderful. Okay. Our next step is to look at. Uh, I the think we need a, Sorry, don't we need a vote oh. to approve it? Yes, we do. I'm sorry. Um, and all members say aye. 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 And then Ivy, did I hear an aye from you too? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, Lexi. Um, okay, so the next step is to look at our next agenda item is to look at our project list for this next biennium. So that's going to be July 1st, 2023 through uh, June 30th, 2025. Um, gotta love fiscal years. Uh, okay, so I think I described a little bit of this last meeting and, and I need to kind of catch you up to make sure everybody's on the same page. So the statewide transportation improvement fund has several different buckets. So there's the project formula funds, which we are deciding on how uh, Hood River County Transportation District will use those funds. That's a specific amount that is allotted to us. And we use those based on uh, employment uh, taxes. And that is ne not necessarily a, a for sure thing. Um, that is something that uh, it might change based on um, uh, employment and unemployment trends. Does that make sense? Um, so, I mean, if we go into a recession, there's a chance that we might um, get less, but uh, based on the current employment trends, ODOT economists believe it is fairly likely that we'll get 100%, uh, if not more, of our allocation. So here, for fiscal year 24, 100% of our allocation 
is uh, 651200 yeah, $650-ish thousand uh, dollars. For fiscal year 24 at 150%, that's about 976000 or close to a million dollars. Uh, for fiscal year 25 at 100%, it's about 680000 And for fiscal year 25 at 150%, it's over $1 million. So based on a recommendation by ODOT, uh, we have, it is suggested that we um, allocate these funds based on 150% of the allocation because ODOT economists believe it is very likely that um, we'll get more than our 100% allocation. And the thing about these funds is that if we don't allocate a certain amount of these funds, so let's say we get 150%, of the allocation, and we only allocate to these different projects 120%, then that's where we're capped. So even though the funds might be available for us to get that 150% level, we will be capped at the 120% level. So the suggestion is to put in the stiff plan at 150%, um, or well, that's what I decided to be do to, to really be on the safe side of things. Um, so that we will definitely get the full amount of funds that can possibly be available to us. Does that make sense? So I've added what the 100% allocation is, but moving forward, I'm going to be looking, I'm just going to pretend more than likely that we'll get that 150% allocation. But then that's up to me and my team that as we actually get these allocations, we make sure that we're planning appropriately based on the funds that we're getting. And so we're not necessarily putting too much service on the road based on what we're actually getting or spending money that we don't have. Any questions? Amy, I think you've answered it. I, I'd raised this at one of our previous discussions. I was um, concerned about you know, allocating funds that may not come in and um, kind of making promises about services that maybe we wouldn't be able to deliver based on um, funding that's received. If you think that um, that staff has the ability to um, maintain service given the funding that's actually delivered, if that's less than 150% or even less than 100%, um, then I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I'm not as optimistic as ODOT is about the economy remaining strong. I'm not optimistic about 150% of anticipated uh, funding be, being available. But um, if, if you think that the staff can manage it, uh, then I, I appreciate the explanation. Thank you. Yeah, and what I'll do is I'll kind of go through the different projects too, and I'll kind of describe how we'll kind of keep an eye on it to make sure that we don't go over um, because a couple, and the way that we would do that is we would have like a base level of service and depending on what we actually receive, then we would do X, Y, and Z. And a lot of these projects are something where we, you know, we start with, you know, except for the maintain existing services, um, a large amount of the projects I'll be talking about is like we, we kind of start with our, our first priority and then we kind of go down the list and we don't necessarily spend that money until we feel confident of what's available. Um, all right, so the before we get into the actual projects, one thing I want the advisory committee to think of is we do need to make sure that everything aligns with um, the uh, Oregon Public Transportation Plan goals and policies. And so, so some things to, to think about when we're going through the projects to make sure that they um, are recognizing these goals are frequency, expansion, reduction of fares, procurement of buses, improved service connections, increased coordination, student services, maintaining service, and enhancing services for vulnerable populations, as well as benefit or burden of marginalized demographics. So these are kind of things that we're trying to solve with our different projects. Any questions? All right. So here is our list. 
And we will need to prioritize these different projects. Um, but I have, so the project number, the project name, the project description, which Oregon Public Transportation goals they meet, and then at 150% allocation, the cost for fiscal year 24 and fiscal year 25. So the first one is low income and student fare program. So this is something that we've been doing probably for the past two di bienniums. So for the past four years, we provide fares for the Hood River County um, middle and high schoolers. And also uh, we help fund some of the, the Gorge Transit Connect fares. So that's the fares that go to low income individuals that we work with local partner organizations in order to fund those funds through. Um, the city of Hood River is also uh, helps uh, put money in those in that fund, uh, as well as in the past Columbia Gorge Health Council a grant that we received from them. That's where we also put that money to for the Gorge Transit Connect program. Um, so twenty seven thousand. That is kind of where we need to be in order to provide the same level that we have been providing, um, and this allows actually a little bit more room for our Gorge Transit Connect program than we have in the past. So I believe it's 21,000 for um, the student passes per year, and then it's about 6,000 for the low income passes. Um, and those get uh, distributed to all the students um, at the beginning of the year. I will say each year that we do it, there's definitely opportunities and we're really trying to improve year upon year of getting the passes to the students and making sure there's education and awareness of the services available to them. Um, okay, any questions on that one? Or concerns? Okay. Um, so the next one is targeted as service to vulnerable populations. So that's about 140,000 a year, and that would match funds for 5311 uh, monies as well as 5310 monies. Uh, and then it would also uh, fund the Portland Medical Shuttle that goes between the Gorge communities and Portland on Tuesdays and Thursdays, as well as allow for some targeted service for vulnerable populations within Hood River County. So that's Upper Valley. Um, so the 5311, uh, again, that also will help pay for the Upper Valley services. And then 5310, um, that is, uh, they'll be for some dial -a ride So we'll, there will be some match funds that we use uh, from the stiff formula funds, or sorry, some of the, the money that we get from the stiff formula uh, will go towards the match for those different services. Does that make sense? Okay. And please, please feel free to, to have me elaborate if you'd like need me to. Uh, and then it would also pay for the, the service going to Portland for medical purposes, et cetera. Any questions on that second project? Okay. Third project, outreach and awareness of services. So this is targeted outreach, marketing, and travel training to vulnerable populations. Uh, the goal is to increase community awareness of services. And then again, this would, some of this would also be used for a match for some 5310 funds. There's a project under 5310 for mobility management. And that would be for the travel trainer to actually do um, outreach to these vulnerable populations. And so part of that is through our Gorge Transit Connect program. Uh, Sarah Crooks, uh, who's our mobility uh, manager and Taylor, the one that you work with. Um, so part of this would pay for her salary to, to work with these different demographics. And this is something we pay for in conjunction with McKed. So we would do half of her salary and McKed also pays for half of her salary who oversees the link, which is the provider in Moscow County. 
Any questions on project three? Kelly? Just real quickly, maybe examples of outreach. How are we doing that? How are we accomplishing it? Yes, good uh, question. So part of that is so through the Gorge Transit Connect program, uh, the outreach that Sarah provides to those local partners, ensuring that they can help their clients know how to use the different services. Also going with their clients um, to do uh, uh, to use the service. So some of the times she'll go with uh, some of the individuals and help teach them how to use the service to go to the grocery store, go to a medical appointment, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and this can be low income, this can be seniors, this can be individuals with disabilities, uh, et cetera. Some of the other outreach would be when we have our Spanish, or one of our Spanish speaking employees uh, go to either one community health event, the next door, um, or do a tabling event in Guadalajara, Mercado Guadalajara. Uh, those are all examples, um, including making sure that all of our marketing materials, our collateral, is uh, listed in Spanish as well, and then ensuring that uh, individuals uh, from these vulnerable communities have access to these brochures. Great, thank you, Amy. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question. Um, yeah. I think number two for the targeted service to vulnerable populations. So I know like when I work with Sarah, we get um, like gorge passes and then we get dial -a ride passes. Would number two be where the dial -a ride passes to low income seniors with disabilities comes from? So that's actually, they would all come from that project one. Project one, okay. Yeah. And then is there one of these projects that, um, then when project two would be- So project- like it, Yeah, go for it. Okay, go ahead. I'm just wondering if there's any part of it where it's like expanding services for folks with mobility concerns or like yeah. adding in stops or something. Yes, potentially. Um, so my hope, so with the 5311 funds that, so the application is going to be, and we have to submit this application in January, so I'm still kind of finalizing it. Um, but 5311 is going to have uh, funds for Upper Valley as well as, um, so the deviated fixed route and potentially adding weekends um, as well as um uh, so sorry let me think about that yeah so we'd be adding potentially the weekends for the upper valley so that's adding deviated uh fixed route service for seniors and low-income individuals who live there um also potentially with those funds too we can expand our dial a ride on weekends as well so that's also a potential possibility Great, thank you and a lot of that, and I keep that kind of vague because um, it'll, again, it's gonna depend on cost of operations um, and depending on how expensive it is for gas or if uh, we have to do another large increase for employee salaries, that kind of reduces potentially how many additional um, or expanded services we can offer for those um, populations. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, all right, cool. Any other questions on project one, two, or three? Okay. All right, so four is kind of a, a big bucket of its maintain existing services, and we can use it for match for other funding sources. So um, this allows us, this is where we would pay for our City of Hood River route, um, but it also has additional funds in there to, um, uh, for some more of the Upper Valley route, as well as the Columbia Gorge Express if needed and do the match for the Columbia Gorge Express. So we fund the Columbia Gorge Express through the STIF, like we were talking about earlier, the STIF, just um, statewide transit network in our community fund. Um, however, we still have to provide a match. So some of that match will come from here.
However, we also do have local uh, funds that we use for that match as well. So Kevin, to kind of to your point, depending on how much we actually get allocated, the first purpose of this maintain existing services is to use it for the city of Hood River route, um, as well as the Hood River Connect. And then the next piece uh, would be for the match, uh, for the Columbia Gorge Express, and uh, if needed for Upper Valley, et cetera. Thank you, Amy. Yeah. And then the next one is Vanpool and I'm sorry, any questions on project four? Okay. So the next project is uh, number five, so Vanpool Mobility Services. Um, and this is to implement a low income Vanpool program and mobility services, i.e. bike share, bike parking, car share, taxi share near at, at mobility hubs and bus stops. So the Vanpool, and I wanna be, you know, this is kind of a, then we have to be very careful with. I, with Vanpool, it can be an incredible resource for people who are trying to get to work um, during times when our services do not operate or where we do not go. So the purpose of adding Vanpool here is potentially um, allowing, let's say, folks at Duckwall who have um, kind of a, a weird schedule, they or not Duckwall, Cardinal Glass. Um, they, their shifts start late at night and then they end early at morning. Uh, some of them, the shifts do operate or do end or start during our operating hours, but there are some that don't. So how do we ensure that these individuals can use some sort of shared transportation rather than just all private vehicles or not be able to get to work because they don't have a transportation option? And that's where the van pulling comes into play. So different employees can share the van pool option and get themselves to and from work easily. And then the idea is to have these van pools at our actual bus stops or at mobility hubs um, as part of our transit network so that they can use potentially system our transit system to that bus stop and then take it from there, or they can use it as kind of a, a collective meeting place and use it from there. Another one is different opportunities come up. There might be the opportunity for bike share. Of course, this is something that we would work with the city of Hood River. And this is kind of, I just wanted to make sure it was in here as a possibility um, so that if the opportunity comes up, this is something that we would have funds for and we could work with the city on. Does that make sense? All right, any questions on that one? All right, cool. And then we have program reserve in here and I've added some, some more funds in here uh, to kind of buffer this uh, specific project so that if we see unanticipated costs in let's say maintain existing services or in the capital expansion and replacement projects, we have some additional funds that we can use to cover those uh, funds. And because we're seeing right now, I know this kind of goes for everybody, but transit specifically, the, the costs, we just, it's so hard to plan for because they just keep rising. Um, whether it's fixing our vehicles or because we haven't received the vehicles that we were supposed to see, receive two years ago, or fuel has gone up exponentially, et cetera, et cetera. Any questions on that one? All right. So the, the seventh one is for capital expansion and replacement. Uh, so this would be solely for match funds for capital grants. So we are planning on, as part of 5311, there's also a um, option to apply for capital funds for, for bus replacement. Um, and that is my expectation where the majority of those match funds will be spent on. That as well as we have a couple other grants that have had to be extended because we didn't receive the vehicles when we were supposed to. Um, so that's what those funds would be used for. And if you look at the two red projects, the reason those are red is those funds are rolled over from 
the last biennium. Um, and will uh, they can be used for capital expansion replacement and ADA access improvements, but they are rollover funds. So I did want to make sure that they were highlighted um, and identified as such. So the ADA access improvements, that is something that is our current biennium uh, plan. And the whole purpose of it is to add uh, ADA access improvements at or near mobility hubs and bus stops. And this is also something that we're working on the city with. Um, we are looking at, we're going to be updating our bus stop here in front of the office to make it more ADA friendly. We're also looking at the aquatic center stop and some other stops as well. Uh, they've just taken a little bit longer than ideal uh, to get off the ground and running. Um, and so that's why we haven't spent the funds in this past biennium. Any questions on those two projects? All right. Uh, is there any questions or discussion in general? Amy, are you looking for a motion from us on whether to move forward with that 150% allocation estimate? Yes. Yeah, so I, I phrase that correctly. Yeah, so I need a recommendation for approval. Um, and forwarding, or sorry, um, need a motion for recommendation to board for approval of these projects, as well as the allocation. And then I also need the, the group to prioritize these different projects. So let's probably start with that first. Um, we can go project by project. And do you want to just say what your prioritization level would be for that project? I mean, another question for you. The, the way um, things are le labeled right now in this list, is this prioritized by staff? Sorry, no, it's not. Um, and that would probably help. I'm just realizing that. I'm sorry. Um, I think probably from a, a staff recommendation point of view, uh, I would say maintain existing services, um, capital and expansion and replacement because we have some vehicles that badly need to be replaced. Um, and then I would say a targeted service to vulnerable populations and low income and student fare program. And then I would uh, do ADA access improvements. Um, I'm sorry, hold on, let me write this down so I have this. Um, Amy, I just wanted to give you a heads up as you write that down. I do have to hop off right at five and six minutes. Um, I have another meeting to prep for that starts at 5.30. Okay, so sounds good. We'll make this quick. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, so four, seven, two. Okay, so my rec staff recommendation would be number four, seven, two, one, six, eight, three, five. So the group can decide to either move forward with that recommendation or to um, suggest changes. For me, I feel like the staff recommendation is enough in line with what I would think and y'all are the experts like I wouldn't have known you needed something badly replaced so thanks for that context so I propose that tell me if my language is wrong at any point Amy that uh we approve the staff recommendation for the prioritized list of the projects 
and recommend the board to approve. And recommend the board to approve. Perfect. I think I need a second. I second that. And all members vote aye. 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 Great, awesome. Wonderful. So that brings us to next steps. Uh, so we will be meeting twice a year. My goal is to have it every spring and every fall, um, except for the years when we need to approve the stiff plan like this year uh, for the, the next biennium. So in spring 2023, we'll convene to review the fiscal 24 stiff formula project goals. So once we um, have approval from ODOT of our SIF plan, then I will discuss kind of what um, our goals are for the next year. And then in fall 2024, uh, we'll review all progress that is done for fiscal year 23. So this current year right now, we'll review what we have done with those funds. Does that make sense? All right, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for everybody joining. Um, and uh, Taylor, I will respond to your email that you sent me earlier today before I leave. And then Valerie, if you have two minutes uh, to chat before you leave, that would be great. Sure thing. Thank you. I right, thank you so much, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right. And number two. Yay. I'm sorry I didn't respond to your email um, yesterday about the list. Um, but they all all the projects are fine. Um, for program reserve, I think more specificity would be good. I might have even like said what you already said was fine, but just as like I'm talking to other RTCs about it, I think the general recommendation is like to be more specific like to maintain services and or use um you know have a reserve for match um so just like a little more specificity okay i can do that, that yeah I just, um as long as yeah. it's okay that i didn't necessarily say that tonight yeah i think i think that's fine because you you spoke to what the reserve funds would be used for Awesome. Um, did I? Oops, I'm still recording. Hold on.